So, you're drifting your Corolla. Got an A86, you got a TE72, KE30, uh, KE70, you know, whatever. They're all the same. They're great, good, fun drift cars. However, they can be finicky, fragile even. Uh, those of us who've been doing Corollas for a while, uh, we have, you know, spare parts laying around. Cause, well, they're getting hard to find. But if you're new to the game, let me tell you a thing or two about axles. So right here, that is a Toyota 6.7 rear end out of a Toyota Celica. And uh, if you have an A86, but it came as an SR5, this might be an upgrade for you. Or if you have a TE72, and it came with a 6.3 because, well, most TE72s did, like this one. That's a direct bolt-in swap to get a 6.7 ring and pinion, a little bit stronger, and with more aftermarket support. The 6.3, well, even though it's probably the most common Toyota solid axle ever there was, not really, but one of them, uh, you can't really get parts for them anymore. So the one in the wagon, for instance, 6.3, 410, actually out of an extremely old, like TE27 Corolla. Uh, it is starting to whine. Crush sleeve has crushed. It's in the name. And uh, we're getting a little bit of a pinion whine, and I can't get a crush sleeve from it. Maybe Weir makes one, but Toyota doesn't sell them anymore. So let's talk about axles. So if you're around for it, we uh, just made a sweet aftermarket four link for this car uh, out of, well, ratchet straps and installed a leaf spring 7.5. Huge upgrade. Not gonna work very well though. So I think today we're gonna put that Celica 6.7 in this car. Now, maybe you're wondering, how do I know what axle came in my car? Well, easy as pie. Look at your engine bay plaque. And down here, it'll say C-T-R-A-T-M. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Last two is axle and transmission. So T50, this was a manual car, and S374. That's your axle code. Now, let's look at a menu here. S means 6.38 ring and pinion. That's how we know. It's not a Ford nine inch, it's a Toyota 6.3. Okay, and well, 37 means not 373, sorry guys, it's not that simple. It's 3.58 final drive. And four means four pinion. Uh, if we had the original rear axle to that blue car, that thing would be a dog with the 3.5 final drive. Now, let's meander over here to our station wagon. So our 20, 20 valve 4AG Corolla station wagon is S374. That's right, same exact axle code. Let's move along over to our Sport Coupe. Uh, we've got, what do we got? S304. So, 30, that's a different gear ratio. Four, still a four pinion, non-limited slip. So, moving on over here. It's a little hard to see, because it's been painted over. But we've got the TE51. You know, she's an SR5 model. Oldest Corolla of the bunch. Now. What do we got down here? T50, 312, T312. But uh, all of these had an S code axle. So why does this have a T code? What's T code? Well, T code is 6.7. Same as that Celica axle we had on the bed of the Ford. So that axle is stronger and bigger than all these other Corolla axles. However, with the 2TC. Not sure why, this is by far the slowest car stock out of the bunch. And uh, biggest axle. So that would be a great improvement for a leaf spring car like this wagon. 
And the six sevens, well, there's more parts availability, so this is a very upgradable axle. The code 31 means this is a 3.9 final drive, which is a pretty good street final drive. Still deep enough to get you some fun around town and some peppiness, but a little longer for the highway. So 3.9, pretty cool gear ratio. The two on the end, that's a two pinion design. And um, hard to explain without having one apart, but basically uh, fewer shafts going through the spider gears inside the actual differential is what they mean by pinion. Obviously, there's a ring and pinion, and the pinion snout is only one pinion. There's not four of those. So, maybe I have a disassembled uh, diff, and we'll look at that. But otherwise, use your imagination. I don't have an AE86 on hand, but we'll just oh, zoom on over, take a look at Michael Paz's. So on this one, it's a AE86 GTS with the T-code axle, so 6.7, 2.8 being 4.3 final drive, and 3 not being 3-pinion, however, it's going to be 2-pinion limited slip differential. And, well, you know, the Toyota van. She's a, she's a Toyota. What axle code's in that? Well, uh, it's also not here, so let's just teleport to where it's at. Future Miles here. That's right, out here at the flower shop custom powder coating so the van um you know that uh kind of looks like a hood but it's it's not that's uh that's just from the car so if we're looking for our build plate it's in here under this little flappy do boop and then if we look this one's kind of crunchy looking but if you look right here it says f 282 what's that mean well it's F code axle, so it's 7.5 and uh, 28. That's a 4.3 final drive. And we know that the uh, two is just two pinion. So that's the van. Back to you, past miles. Anywho, so let's tug that blue thing to the front yard and see if we can't get a 6.7 under it today. business and uh, any new axle install is uninstalling these flares. Yeah. Should always be your first step. Perfect. You've got a diff that's already out of the car. How do you find out what ratio it is? This here, this is our 6.3 otherwise known as an eight volt because held into the third member is eight volts. The six sevens, well, they have 10. And I think the seven five, we haven't even got to those yet. Well, the seven five, I think is at 11. So if you have one that's already out of the car, what you need to do is mark one of your teeth on your pinion gear, spin it around until you can count all of those teeth and then repeat the process on the ring gear. Then we'll do some quick maths and, uh, we'll find out for sure what ratio this is. I've always gone under the assumption it was a 3.9, but I don't know that I've ever mathed this one out. So let's find out. So I'm gonna mark with our Sharpie. Kind of lost cause, cause this thing is fully still covered in gear lube in there, but we'll see. We are one, two, three, 10. 11, 12, 12 pinion teeth. Now we'll repeat the process on our ring gear. One, two, 
40, 41, 42, 43. 43 teeth on the ring. So our totals were 43 teeth on the ring gear and 12 on the pinion, which the quick math's on is you do 43 divided by 12 equals 3.58, which means this is actually the same axle code that was in the Corolla. Now, if you wanna look here, this post here, that's a, uh, a shaft that these spider gears pivot on. And this is another. So you see there's one here, there's one here. One goes all the way through. Two of these are actually little half stubs. And uh, well, that would indicate that this is a four pinion rather than a two pinion. Two pinion only has one going straight through. That's your difference. So this was just for science explanation, but let's get back to throwing an axle in this blue turd. What other axles might be a good upgrade for your Corolla? Well, uh, we pulled this 7.5 out of the, the uh, sport coupe here. And well, this is a possible upgrade for any four link or leaf sprung Corolla. In this scenario, we have a leaf sprung axle. This came out of a Toyota van, uh, 86, 87. Um, Prior to 85, I believe the vans came with the 7.1, which is the E-code diff, and pretty much just stay away from those. Parts availability is zero, and they're not very strong. So this, however, this is a 7.5 uh, F-code diff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, um, the leaf sprung van axle, uh, pretty readily available. These also came four link, uh, not compatible with the car four link. Uh, these leaf spring pads, uh, are definitely a little farther apart than the cars, but probably within a usable range. And, uh, they are a bit wider than a car axle. However, quite strong. So if you had a pre 79 Corolla, that's leaf sprung or a wagon, that's leaf sprung. Uh, this could be pretty quickly a straight bolt in, and most of the vans were 410 and 43 final drive, which is a pretty cool final drive. Now, the original Toyota Celica Supra uh, Mark I came with a four link Toyota 7.5 that's four lug and rear disc brake. The brakes are astronomically similar to GTS AE86 and essentially the same. Now, that axle will bolt directly into the four link that's in your AE86 TE72 KE70 Blase Blase four link Corolla and utilize any Corolla parts. Now, the pan hard bar tab is actually a larger diameter and therefore needs a different bushing or heim joint at the axle side. Uh, the 7.5 is extremely strong comes in Lexus and rear wheel drive Toyota pickups and Previas and vans and, well, it's not the strongest thing Toyota makes, but they are quite stout. So if you're making power, you got a Beams or a JZ or a UZ or something like that in front of your rear end, 7.5 is probably a great choice and keeps it Toyota. One thing I was excited about on that uh, blue car is that, well, the, the lower four link bars were at least in and though I actually do have a set of lower link bars at the house. Uh, what I don't have is link bar bolts. I'm lying. I have bolts, but I don't have nuts for them. And I certainly don't have upper link bars. So we're going to run to the ace, get some nuts, and uh, what better time than to drive the wagon because I haven't driven this thing in weeks. So go ahead and knock the cobwebs off the old girl. Thank <laughs> you. 
are back in business. Let's get these four link bolts installed. Yeah, man. And uh, then we can move on to trying to lift that dang axle in here. Now, uh, these things are freaking heavy. So, you know, uh, it's always good to ask for help. And um, well, my neighbor, he just stopped by at the worst time and I just stuck him into helping me get that axle out of the bed of the truck. In fact, he offered. So, we'll get some uh, nuts on these four link bolts and we'll move right along. Been using my jack out back in the dirt so much lately. Doesn't like to roll anymore. I'll do that for you. So you better appreciate it. Ah. One of those situations where it's uh, certainly nice to have a helping hand. We don't have that today. Oh. So we'll just be slow and steady. Darn it. There we go. A great time to have upper, upper link bars, but we don't. Well, I also don't have uh, shocks for this. So we'll just have to bounce along. Being that this uh, sport coupe was a sportsy SR5, you know, model. This does, in fact, come with a rear sway bar. And um, many of your lower end T and K E cars do not. So one of the perks of the Celica rear end is it also comes with a sway bar and it can be bolted up to the Corolla end links. They'll fit on an 8.6 as well. I also don't have a pan hard bar. That'd be nice. Before we get too far along here, we want to go ahead and throw our springs up in here. One handed, cause you know, why not? We'll uh, put tail lines up and up here. We didn't put the isolators in, but the little rubber isolators are still supposed to be there. And uh, we'll just jack this up into place. Then our play bar end links, they run up to there to these end links, already still on the chassis. And uh, if we had the pan hard bar, it would go from that cross arm down to this stud, and we would be in the money. Now, these parking brake cables from the Celica, uh, should, I think I had them hooked up on my last 8.6, uh, replace those from this car's original axle and function just fine. And then we'll have a good working drum parking brake. Just like that, easy as pie. So, guess we'll wrap this up real quick. <sighs> guess we'll steal our rollers back off of the 7.5 which we gotta lift up into the van here, truck, take back to the backyard. And uh, well, then I guess we'll let that thing down on the ground, roll it back to the backyard, should be good.
that thing does not roll like at all uh and it's not the brakes it's the steering um someone i guess put a new idler arm no pitman arm on it at some point i don't think they got it splined onto the gearbox in the correct place i think it's binding um but beyond that it sets the whole center link offset to one side uh, and then if you set the toe at the tie rods to fairly straightish, uh, the steering gearbox can't turn all the way one direction. So it uh, looks like I need to pop the pitman arm off, center the box, put the pitman arm back on, the toe at the tie rods and center link seem to be pretty good now. I just adjusted it. Uh, but yeah. Since everything's crooked like that, the Ackerman's whacked way out. So once you start turning, one wheel will be super duper turned, the other's almost straight, and then you end up basically parking braking yourself. Anywho, <sighs> hose it off a little bit, cause well, you know, why wouldn't you? It's a pretty nice looking car. In fact, this color is really kind of growing on me. Um, hopefully you learned a little bit about these things. A uh, little bit that we didn't talk about, 6.3. Um, maybe in Japan, but in the U.S. and most of the rest of the world, there is no off-the-shelf limited slip differentials for the 8-bolt 6.3 Corolla rear end. You can buy spools, full spools, and mini spools, and you can weld them. I don't know if I'm going to say the brand right, but Okomotif is just now coming out with a lunchbox Aussie locker, ratcheting locker for the 6.3 rear ends. Uh, I think they're just now finished. You can reach out to them and get one of those. The 6.7. Uh, you can get one out of an AE86 GTS and it'll bolt into these earlier cars that have the four link. Perfect bolt in, better gear ratios, rear disc brakes and limited slip. Uh, the A86 diffs from 84 to 85 are Zinke early axles. Uh, they use a different axle shaft and they use a different limited slip differential. Uh, the late is marginally stronger. The early is identical to all the 6.7s that came in Celicas and stuff like that. So if you get a Celica 6.7 and you put it in your Corolla and you want a limited slip, if you get a Zinke limited slip differential for an AE86, you can have a good limited slip. Otherwise, once again, you can get mini spools and full spools for those axles and weld them. There's companies like Weir that make all sorts of rebuild components for them. And uh, for the 7.5, if you go that route, both Van or Celica Supra, uh, the Celica Supra stock diff comes with an LSD in it. Um, that's buildable through companies like Weir. And the gear ratios for those are just as whatever you want because they came in so many things from Toyota, but also in the off-road market, they go deep into the fives in gear ratios if you want like a 513 ratio in the back of your car or you can go long go 35 37 all that stuff's out there so uh you know hopefully this helped i am certainly not an encyclopedia on this topic but i'd like to help if i can so get out there build your car